Hey, Dr. Picolas. Uh, this is the second video in a series of lectures on functional programming for estimation. Um, I have here uh, the code that I've been working on, and actually this is the latest version, but I want to go back to the version that uh, I had showed you before. And so um, I'm actually uh, I'm using Git, the version control software, to uh, do this. And uh, I figured that um, this is a good time to showcase Git uh, and try to convince you that it's uh, 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 some uh, software that's worth investing some learning time into. Uh, so it's been extremely helpful for me. And so uh, Git is, uh, like I said, some version control software. So it might just be easiest to um, show you the log that uh, I have, um, or the log of, you know, sort of my, my software history uh, up to this point. And um, so you can see that Git is a program that actually stores um, like all these different versions uh, of my uh, software that I've been, um, uh, that I've been programming to date. So it's, it's really helpful for um, if you have uh, previous versions or if you have a current version of your code isn't working and, and you have um, you want to go back to a working version then you can get it here and um, actually it's even better to show you um, the full history in graph form so let's see I want to show everything and I think I need two dashes here. And um, this kind of shows you the sort of, uh, uh, if you notice that there's actually this branch, uh, branched graph uh, type of, of system uh, that you can use to your advantage. So uh, for instance, I have um, a, a branch that is dedicated to just filming. So I like to, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm coding, uh, I'm on the master branch but while I'm filming right um, I want to show you uh, I guess the progress of the code in a specific order so I don't I don't code in the same order as I um, you know want to show you because of my coding um, you know I, I code different things at different times in kind of a random way um, so I kind of want to show you a more clear progress so I actually have a different branch entirely for um, these different versions of, of the code. And uh, I tagged um, the, um, uh, the different versions uh, so that I can just jump back and forth between uh, these tags to show you the different uh, versions throughout the video. So um, it's, it's a really neat piece of software and um, it interfaces with um, uh, you know, GitHub and GitLab and all of these other sort of code or these cloud-based um, storage solutions, but um, it doesn't require any of those. You and I could just collaborate directly using this. Um, and also, this is the command line uh, version, but uh, there are several different graphical front ends to this software. So um, I'm actually going to, uh, one thing actually is that uh, head um, you know, this indicator says that uh, my current working directory is pointing to um, this whole, you know, it has a tag and a branch name. Um, but, uh, so I am, I am in this um, sort of time state or code state. Uh, so I do want to go back to uh, where you, uh, where we left off the last time in, you know, the end of the first video. I think the command, I think I needed to use checkout instead of uh, switch. So uh, git checkout uh, video one end. So it switched to um, uh, the, the previous version. So actually if I use the same, uh, it now has head pointing to, to this guy. Uh, so if I pull up my text editor, then it'll notice actually uh, it, um, it changed the file that I was viewing in my text editor, which um, this text editor is Vim. Uh, so it's my favorite uh, and it's, it's what I use for, for tech and for 
uh, Python and everything else. So I'm just going to load the new file and we are back to uh, where we were in the last video. So um, we uh, last time we defined the Gaussian lift function and we also had um, we made these two functions uh, unrepresent and represent matrix and these were simply helper functions that we ended up using in um, the, the lift. So we uh, found the matrix representation of our function and then we um, made the lifted function and, and returned that as a lifted function. So uh, this is all fine and dandy. Uh, let's then move on to, um, I think the last, the next thing we needed to do was uh, get the, do the same exact thing for the unscented transform. So um, I might just pull that up here. So we uh, made, we, um, you know, made the constructor, or we made the class of, um, or the data type for the Gaussians, and we made the lifting function. So we need to do the same for the, <coughs> uh, for the sigma representation and uh, the unscented transform. So similar to this lift function, I'm going to make, and I'm calling it unscented transform because that's what we call it in class, actually. Uh, but the unscented transform takes this uh, mapping and it lifts it to the transformation between um, the sigma representations. And then also we have the uh, the mapping between a Gaussian and the sigma representation and back and forth. So we have sent, or rather unsent takes it to the unscented version and then sent takes it back to the, you know, the, the Gaussian version. So um, in the code here, let's see, uh, so I think, I think I have that um, coded up in this second tag. So uh, let's see, again, get status. I just want to make sure I haven't deleted or changed anything, and that's good. So uh, git checkout video 2.1. UT for unscented transform. So again, reload the file, and uh, we did exactly this. So um, this is the Gaussian lift, and I might um, just collapse that. But we also have uh, a. Uh, okay, so I I ended up making actually two different classes or two different data types. I have a. Uh, a sigma representation and also these uh, these comments on top are just um, I'm just commenting in the type signature for uh, the different uh, the different functions but um, instead of making a sigma representation data type outright I say that the sigma representation is a list of sigma points and so I also made a sigma point um, uh, class and uh, so the sigma point class has a position and a and a mean. Uh, uh, it has a it has a position and uh, two different weights: the mean weight and the covariance weight. And then the sigma representation is just a list of, of these sigma points. So um, I had to uh, actually make um, a sigma point lift function as well. Um, so that just, uh, if you have a function that takes uh, an x and, and goes to y, then the sigma point, uh, the lifted version of the sigma point function simply um, maps the, uh, map, it, it, it says x, uh, it takes the position of the sigma point and makes that x, and then it just maps the position of the sigma point, and it keeps everything else the same. And it just returns, this returns a new sigma point that is, has the mapped position and everything else is the same. Now for the sigma representation, we have to do something similar, right? So here we have the uh, unscented transform lifting function. It takes in an f, um, which is a function going from x to y. 
and it transforms it into uh, a uh, the propagation of the sigma representation on x to a sigma representation on y. So uh, here uh, in, inside this body we define a new function and I call it SRF here but I you know should have called it UTF um, but anyways uh, we're defining a new function that takes in the SRX and it then maps F over the sigma points in FR, uh, in SRX so what I mean by that is uh, so this mapping function you can look it up in Python it's uh, basically saying uh, for every um, for every sigma point in SPs I'm going to perform the sigma point lift of F on the sigma points and then it uh, converts it back to uh, a list so actually I think I need to I didn't realize that I should make this a list so uh, I'm that might mess up my version history but we'll, we'll um, uh, get to that when we uh, or rather we will uh, address that when we get there um, so this is the unscented transform uh, that yeah that, that lifts similarly the uh, you know si similar to the Gaussian lift it, it lifts uh, a function to or a, a mapping to its uh, propagated version uh, and then I just had uh, I have unsent and sent here. Uh, these are uh, just copied directly from uh, you know Dr. Jones's notes. All right, so let's see if um, this works. So I have here that. Uh, I have an X bar and I have a P and I have a last a previous estimate which is a Gaussian and so I'm just going to print out uh, the previous estimate and then I have the my matrix which is going to be my state mapping matrix I'm going to get the functional representation of that and I will lift uh, and I'm calling this NF um, I will lift this uh, using Gaussian lift and so my propagated prior will be the lifted, you know, the, the propagator uh, or the lifted F of the previous estimate. And similarly for the sigma representation, I have um, my previous uh, estimate sigma representation is just the unscented version of the previous estimate. And I do the unscented transform on F. And so the prior sigma representation is going to be the um, the unscented transform of this of this guy, so <clears throat> I will uh, I then print this and I, I convert it back to the Gaussian just so we can make a comparison. So let's see here. Um, I want to uh, run estimation.py and see what it does. And here we have a. Uh, a match. So, uh, previous estimate is is this, is this guy. We propagated it through. Um, this is the one that is propagated through the, um, uh, the the matrix, and this is the one that is propagated through the unscented transform. Since it's a linear function, we get the same answer.